Did you know that the color of your water can be the secret to controlling algae? But here's the real mind blower. What if the same tannins that make our water dark could hold the key to a cleaner, healthier aquarium? Well, stick around because today we're exploring the science of tannins and why these natural compounds might be just your new best friend in preventing algae. So before we get into why tannins are so effective at preventing algae, let's break down what they actually are. Tannins are organic compounds found in plants, especially in things like tree bark, leaves, and even seeds. When these plant materials fall into the water, tannins leach out, giving the water that characteristic amber or tea-like hue. You know, we've all faced a frustrating battle with algae. It drives me crazy sometimes. You set up your perfect aquarium and all of a sudden everything is covered in this unsightly mess. It's a constant struggle and a persistent nuisance. And not only does it make your aquarium look unattractive, it can also discourage hobbyists, often feel like a sign of failure in their efforts to create a thriving, beautiful environment. But how do tannins prevent algae? It's all about chemistry and ecology. Let's start with the basics of algae growth. Algae thrive on three main things, light, nutrients, and space. Tannins disrupt this trifecta in several fascinating ways. First, the coloration caused by tannins reduces the amount of light that penetrates through the water column. This phenomenon, known as light attenuation, plays a crucial role in limiting algae growth. Algae depends heavily on photosynthesis to thrive, and this process requires light as a source of energy. With tannins in the water, the amber or tea-like colors absorb and scatter light, making it harder for light to reach deeper areas. This limits the photosynthesis process that algae rely on to grow and reproduce, effectively stunting their development. To put it into perspective, it's like placing a natural filter over a light source, dimming its intensity. The result? Less light equals less energy available for algae to bloom and overrun the ecosystem. Next, tannins chemically bind to certain nutrients in the water, particularly iron and phosphorus, which are essential for algae growth. This process, known as chelation, is both subtle and powerful. Iron and phosphorus are like the lifeblood for algae, fueling their rapid growth and reproduction. When tannins bind to these nutrients, they form stable complexes that are no longer freely available for algae to absorb. Imagine locking away a treasure test. The nutrients are there, but the algae can't reach them. Over time, this nutrient starvation weakens algae colonies, preventing blooms from overtaking. What's even more remarkable is that this natural process is akin to the targeted action of some synthetic water treatments, yet tannins achieve it without introducing harsh chemicals into the environment. This means a healthier, more balanced ecosystem. What's fascinating is how this mimics the role of certain chemical additives like these that are used to control algae, but tannins do it naturally. Lastly, tannins can lower the pH of the water, creating a slightly acidic environment. Algae typically prefers more neutral or slightly alkaline conditions, so this shift in pH gives them one less advantage. Here's why that's significant though. pH doesn't just affect algae directly, it also influences the chemical forms of nutrients in the water. In acidic conditions, certain nutrients become less bioavailable to algae, compounding the effects of chelation. Additionally, the lower pH supports a proliferation of specific beneficial bacteria and microorganisms that thrive in rich tannin environments. These microbes can outcompete algae for nutrients, further tipping the ecological balance. Think of it as creating a playing field that's heavily skewed in favor of life forms that promote water clarity and ecosystem health. This subtle but powerful shift can transform an algae-prone environment into a stable, thriving aquatic habitat. And let's not forget beneficial bacteria. Many tannin-loving microbes outcompete algae for resources, creating a natural balance that's hard to achieve with artificial treatments. So if tannins really are so effective, why aren't they more widely used in aquatic systems? Could it be that we've underestimated the power of natural solutions, or is it simply that it's a visual issue? Brown means dirty. Additionally, algae can play a vital role in an aquatic ecosystem. It forms the base of the food web, providing essential nutrition for small invertebrates and fish. And without it, the entire ecosystem could collapse. 
Through photosynthesis, algae produces oxygen, which is critical for aquatic life, and some types even help filter water by absorbing excess nutrients, promoting balance and clarity. Instead of seeing algae as the enemy, we can manage its growth to support a healthier, more balanced ecosystem. So, is it all bad? Here's a thought though, what if we could harness tannins to revolutionize the way we manage not just aquariums, but the entire aquatic ecosystem. But before you answer that, ask yourself this. Could the secret to balancing aquatic life lie in the very things that we've been trying to filter out?